my favorite chew toy that guy thanks bobby shafts though has posted again and it seems like he's having problems with azimuth angles today well let's just watch his video and we'll keep track of all the errors that he's made so let's got a good counter it's going to go for a bit so let's go and have a look at the silliness that is that guy what's up everybody that guy again here to demonstrate azimuth and how they do not work on the globe Whoa, 10 seconds in and he's already got an error. Azimuth angles work just fine on a globe. You've just got to use the right type of maths, that guy. I'll show you that later. Just tie a knot in it. Since nobody else is willing to demonstrate their claim, I'll do it for them. This is going to get rough. So you might want to, uh, if you're a globe defender, you might want to turn it off now so you can keep claiming ignorance. The only thing you can do is cover your eyes and cover your ears and hope hope people forget about it right okay that guy this is actually what is called trolling you're saying stuff to get a reaction but there's no scientific basis for it just tie a knot in it we are looking at the moonrise of june 2019 it would be june 14th in cape town south africa it was a 93 percent full moon that day moonrise was at 3:52 p.m in the afternoon at 106 degrees azimuth this is uh, from True North, so we add 25 degree of the negative 25 degree declination from South Africa. And we will end up with our declination for that location. Whoopsies, no, this is True North readings that the uh, moon calc and all these things are providing. So you do not have to adjust for a magnetic declination that will give an error. The only time you need to do a magnetic declaration the only time you need to do magnetic declaration the only time you need to do magnetic declination adjustments is when you're using a compass i can't see any compass anywhere around here so why are you doing magnetic declination adjustments you're either a straw man or stupid which one just tie a knot in it i'm more interested in the moon set than the moon rise because everybody forgets about the moon set and um i'll show you how ridiculous the globe is ready i have a globe here <laughs> this bar represents midnight and noon on the other side have the protractor on cape town you can see right below this little dot there in the center is cape town africa or south africa and zero degrees is pointing to north 90 is east and um, 180 is south even though that makes no sense already on the globe because south should be zero. Oh mate no it makes perfect sense you can't just swap the references around because you cross the equator have you thought what that's going to do to pilots as they're flying along and crossing the equator suddenly yeah, they were trying they were flying 180 degrees and now all of a sudden they're flying 180 degrees the other way no mate that would not work whatsoever it doesn't matter just 180 is the south pole zero is the north pole all over the globe so just get that in your head right now just tie a knot in it and north should be 180 because that's what we have at the top would be the mirror opposite so you can't right off the get-go if you look here that's not magnetic north folks sorry to tell you magnetic north isn't out in some random place where this is pointing that guy you're trying to use a straight line why do you think people show you pointing north from a location using a piece of string because it wraps around it follows the surface now what if you get yourself a flexi ruler and bend it along the surface you will see that north from this location will go roll around the globe to the top you're either straw manning this whole thing or you're stupid which one is it just tie a knot in it but we'll just ignore that giant faux pas right we can still show you how ridiculous this is using what they call azimuths and math so the number was 257 add 25 283 283 degrees this is where south africa would be during that time of year june we see the tilt 
that would be if the sun was there. This clay ball here represents the moon. We can see it's not directly behind it. It is offset quite a bit for 93%. And um, either way, the moon would have to be where this where this straight edge is about to point through the 283, 283 degree azimuth. So this would be midnight and every one of these lines is it's an hour, 15 degrees. And you see Cape Town is just off of this, this line here. That far, maybe the width of my stink finger. So that's one, two, three, four and a half hours. So 435 AM, 283 degrees. This would be 270. And since I don't have a full circle to work with, we're gonna have to use the other side of the protractor and do it like that. So if that's 270, you can see here I'm going 283. That's pointing way up into the sky, as you can see here. The moon would be over there, and yet this is where the globe model has it pointing. 283 degree azimuth is up there. Anybody care to uh, demonstrate what I'm doing wrong? Oh, and I bet if you took off 25 degrees that you're not supposed to have added to that ruler and dropped it down, that's going to be pointing awfully close to where the moon is, dude. Just tie a knot in it. Doesn't work. The moon rise kind of works, I guess. We'll see what the moon rise was. 106 at 3.52 a.m. So we'll rotate this guy around. So three hours from here, you one, two, three, almost four hours there. And 106 plus the 25, be obviously 131, which is right there. Let me get on the other side so we can see where this thing's actually pointing. My uh, skills as a director are not very good, I apologize. Mate, your skills as a director are certainly better than your skills as an astronomer, because at that you totally suck. Just tie a knot in it. So, 131 is way over here. 121.31. That's down there. The moon is not rising from down there, folks. So there you have it. Demonstrating the globe model. You know, um, observing phenomenon and demonstrating it on the globe. Complete fail. And I bet if you took off that 25 degrees declination that you shouldn't have added, where is that going to be making that ruler pointing now? Sort of like to that moon-shaped ball thing, hey? Just tie a knot in it. I might do a couple more, even though this should suffice. But I'm sure the the insufferable globe tard will. You called? I heard you mentioned insufferable globe tard. Oh, look. Just keep watching the rest of the video because this gets better and better from here. This is only just a few of your fails so far. Have something to say. You didn't do it right. The season's wrong. The tilt's right. That would be summer. We're talking about June. You didn't do it right. Your moon. Ugh. When we were talking about Finland earlier, Sweden rather, your line of sight from Stockholm would be there. There. You're not seeing that moon down there below the Earth. Well, given the uh, inaccuracies in your alignment system there, I think that's working pretty darn good. Yes, from Finland and Sweden, Stockholm, you are looking very much north, straight over the top, 
well, not straight over the top, around the top of the globe. Now, if you want to extend this a little bit further, what would you be seeing if you were standing right at the pole, that guy? Right, you would be seeing the whole moon for 14 days when it's risen, wouldn't you? Absolutely. So when you go down the light round the globe a bit further, well, just have a look at these moon rise and moon set times. See how long the moon is in the sky for? It's got to be up there somewhere. You're not. You're down there on the ball. You can't see below your feet, and that moon is below your feet. 70 degrees is always higher than 28 degrees. Yes, that guy, 70 degrees is bigger than 28, but that's not how it works. It allows you to see around the top of the globe. Come on, mate, you've got to think 3D. Just tie a knot in it. Or actually 59 degrees is where Stockholm is, is always above 28 degrees, even in the uh, lunar standstill, whatever the fuck that means. Oh man, you don't understand Major Lunar Standstill, you still don't understand that concept yet, and yet you're still holding yourself up as a prophet of all things. Lunas, my goodness. Oh, this is just getting worse, mate. Yes, 59 degrees is greater than 28, but that's not how it works. Think about the Arctic Circle and what the Arctic Circle means as far as the sun goes. That's where you can see the sun for 24 hours. This is kind of like that. Just tie a knot in it. All right, guys, face palm warning. Not sure how the moon is changing speeds when it should be a pattern. Changing speed? WTF, mate. What, what? Hang on, what are you talking about? The moon doesn't change speed. This is an angular issue. Just tie a knot in it. Anyways, if you look at the percentages of the moon, as it nears full, it'll be like... Another face palm warning, guys. So as it's new moon, it'll be like 11% the next day, 11%, 10%, 9%, 8%. And then when it's full, it'll be like 99.9%, the next day, 99.7, 98.5, 94. So as it gets full, it slows down or something. Doesn't make any sense. That guy, you really seem to have a trouble with sine and cos functions. How are you ever going to understand um, lunar circuits? How are you ever going to understand what comes next? Because I'm about to teach you about 3D non-Euclidean geometry, the type of stuff that we use to calculate azimuth and elevations from the surface of the planet. This stuff's going to hurt your head, mate. Just tie a knot in it. Unless, of course, we're talking perspective and not constants. I might do a video on that, too. Anyways, till next time, start thinking. Keep it flat. You better start modeling globetards. I'm out. But before I show you some of the uh, functions that you need to understand to be able to calculate this stuff yourself, I'll show you a little gadget that I made and programmed. It's a little ESP8266 and it's running an Arduino code. But what it's doing is it takes inputs, my lat longs, the time from the internet, TLE data from NORAD for the International Space Station. And from that it calculates exactly where I will see the space station overhead or through the planet. And when it's overhead, I see it on my little display and I can run outside and every single time for the last two or three years, spot on, it's exactly where it says it should be. So, and of course, if someone was in Sydney and doing it with the different lat longs, they get different azimuth elevations and it works really fine. I've even got a video on my channel where Wade's Underworld, Ruif and myself, all three of us watched the International Space Station from three different locations, a thousand kilometers apart, all with different azimuth and elevations. Too easy. Barely an inconvenience. Okay, that guy, just watch this little diagram. It's not a graph, it's a diagram. Now, notice the little dot in the middle. Oh, first of all, the green line at the end of that is where the moon is, so it's going in a nice constant circle around and around and around. You're getting sleepy. Now watch the little yellow dot moving across the middle, back and forward, back and forward. Notice how when it's going across the middle it's going quite fast, and when it gets to the extremities it's going really slow and it stops and turns around. That's what you're seeing at a full moon. That's why it sits at 99% for a day or two because it's right at the end there. It's very, very simple. So that guy, the basic thing you need to know is that 
Well, you know how a straight line is the shortest distance between two points on a flat plane. Well, when we're talking spheres, the shortest distance between two points is a great circle line. And the easiest way to figure that out on a globe is with a piece of string. And that's why people use pieces of string between the North Pole and where you're measuring your compass from. That's the shortest distance. Now, have a look at this um, page here. This is from my little favorite movable scripts website. And this shows you how to do the calculations for a great circle line. Very easy, isn't it, mate? I'm sure you're lost by now. So while you guys click like and subscribe and I fill the world with water, how about you also tell me, shall I take the channel from that guy using compasses, um, atmospheric gradients, or, or all of the above?